phlegm, where I want to shift yes. phlegm. Yeah. yeah. But you need a good Actually, constitution for it. Yeah, yeah. I find that the inula on a day-to-day -day basis much more useful. Um, right, do you want to start coming down, guys? Um, yes. Now start here. Feed are two of the sedated herbs. Uh, this is hops. See this climber yeah. here? Yes. That's running everywhere. Yeah. Needs a good cutback. That's the hops. This. Yep. And this is valerian. Okay, valerian officinalis. This is one of the most useful herbs for anxiety and insomnia. You know, we started a sleep clinic at, the, at um, Health and Herbs. And this would be in virtually everybody's blend of medicine who has insomnia. The uh, clinical researched evidence is definitely there. You need to use it for three weeks. Don't say you've used valerian if you haven't used it for three weeks. Some people do not suit valerian, all right? Um, uh, those uh, tall, thin, um, uh, wispy people, it doesn't tend to suit them. It's more of a rugger bugger um, kind of <laughs> solid, good, firm woman land is what you want for the valerian. Um, however, the valerian blend that I use, it's only one of the 12 herbs. So even for people who the valerian doesn't suit them particularly, it does, there's not enough in it to irritate. Um, so the valerian relax blend is particularly good, um, well suited to a whole variety of constitutions. Um, the, people think that you take a cup of chamomile tea in the evening to treat um, uh, insomnia, and this is a chamomile lawn, by the way. Um, so it's a nice, you might get a nice smell of chamomile. Um, so the uh, insomnia is treated from the minute you wake up in the morning. You don't wake up in the morning not rested well because you've got insomnia, by definition. You go through the day getting tighter and tighter and tighter, and then you expect a cup of chamomile tea to knock you out. That ain't going to happen, <laughs> right? So you need to use the herbs from the time you get up, regularly three times a day. Um, for chronic insomnia, you probably need a mixture of the tonic and the tincture. You need vitamin D, you need vitamin B complex, you need your sardines, you need your avocados and your nuts and seeds, all right? Um, so uh, insomnia is affecting more and more and more people. It's not, um, it's not independent of the fact that one in three people in the population have digestive problems. <laughs> Okay, so you can't treat the digestive problems without treating the insomnia and you can't treat the insomnia without treating the digestive problems. So there you go. So the, the Valerian Relax Blend also has chamomile and other herbs that will relax and, and uh, heal the gut. So that, that's why the herbs work nicely together. Behind us here, we'll find um, fennel, which is in the digestive tea. Um, fennel is particularly good for wind. Yep. So windy, burpy digestion, um, it's anti-flatulent particularly. This is mallow, and again, you can feel some of these leaves, and you can imagine your lungs are sore. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> you can imagine your lungs are sore, and feel those, and see if you think they'd be quite nice for, for your lungs. Um, lungs and digestion. Sorry, I, it's mainly digestion, but anything that soothes the digestion will also soothe the, the, the lungs. <coughs> So they're not, they're connected together. Um, so mallow is uh, soothing, demulsant, um, uh, kind, you know, to a sore belly is probably. Very suitable for children, 90 year olds. This is just gorgeous. I use loads of this. Leaves and roots. <coughs> the roots, if you chew the roots, it's like chewing gum. It actually goes all soft and mushy. Um, so you can use it like a chewing gum. There's lavender in here. Um, everything is very late. That's the hops coming around the corner. Um, the lavender, um, valerian, the skull cap. A lot of these herbs for sedation are the pink and purple range of spectrum. Um, uh, soothing and sedating. And it, it is like the doctrine of signatures. You do notice that a lot of the herbs that are good for the liver are yellow, yellow flowers. A lot of them that are soothing for the nerves. It's because of the constituents that are in them. Yeah. Um, so the mallow, 
fennel and the hops and the valerian. Yeah. Sorry. Um, now, if you want to smell a bit of her, uh, just pass a tiny bit along. You take a few sprigs just so that there's a few left for the end of the day. Um, and just pass it along. This is very high in volatile oils. This is associated with dreaming and wisdom. Um, you put a few sprigs under your pillow to dream of the person. Um, to bring romance into your life, um, <laughs> to contact the other world. It's a very mystical kind of plant. It's a soothing digestive bitter. Um, so even if people have digestive, but most bitters are irritant to the stomach. So you need to be gentle and careful. That's why I would never use bitters just by themselves. I always use them with things like mallow and ginger and chamomile. And you just use a hint of a tint of the bitters. Okay. Um, so this is the Artemisia. This was what they used to for absinthe. You know all the artists that went mad on absinthe? That's because this is only used for four to six weeks and then you stop for a few weeks um, because it's got a neurotoxin in it. This isn't one that I would use a huge amount of and I would use it for four to six weeks and then I would take a break for four to six weeks and then use it again. But these guys were using very cheap absinthe um, and using it in alcoholic doses. Like you have to work hard to... to uh, nutmeg is the same. Nutmeg yeah. is actually neurotoxic in high, high, high doses. Nutmeg is the best aphrodisiac. <laughs> Sometimes it's the thing that you don't think of. It's a very nice aphrodisiac herb. Um, this is tansy, which is uh, an, a vermifuge, which means it's good for clearing worms. Um, it's not on general distribution, not used in general, because it's also an abortifacient. I hate to be topical. Um, but this is a, um, a, it's a, a very um, potent herb. Again, strong, volatile oils. So you want to know what you're, you're doing with it. Um, so that's the marubium. This is the skull cap. See, a lot of things aren't in flower this year. This is the skull cap. Again, very nourishing nervine. Very nice for anxiety. This is anxiolytic um, in a much lighter way and a restorative way, whereas the valerian is a much heavier anxiolytic. Um, this is very good for getting off to sleep if you're tight and tense. You know the white noise, the washing machine head? <laughs> uh, motherwort is very good for the menopause. It's a nervine um, an anxiety medication, particularly for... Uh, heart palpitations, and um, I even use it in arrhythmias. Um, and again, the number of people with arrhythmias has gone squooshed. Um, uh, people who are having grief. and good for grief, along with the St. John's wort. Yeah, particularly good. Um, so the mother wort is very good, along with chocolate tincture at menopause. Um, uh, both of them are very nice anytime, but they, they would be when I would particularly use them. Grief. Um, and again, for people who get palpitations in bed, you know, where they become overwhelmed by the day's events and can't yeah. face the next day. That's when I would use this one. Uh, can you see the alpine, the, the wild strawberries? Yeah, I think oh, now those wild strawberries more than pack here. their punch. Yeah. yeah. Again, this is the elegaic acid, anti cancer. Um, this is where the original strawberries were cultivated from. Okay. Um, they taste very sweet. Um, but m many, more, many more active constituents than the cultivated strawberries. Yeah, the more cultivated they are, the less the original constituents um, are in there. This is the milk thistle. You all know the milk thistle. People ask me how do what do I do about my snails? Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Roshi is horrified. <laughs> I don't have ducks to feed them to Roshi. Um, and apparently, if you throw them over your neighbour's wall, they come back. They're totally <laughs> yeah, not that I ever would. Um, they're, 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 they do. Yeah. I'm sure that one's going to come back to haunt. Uh, milk thistle stimulates the um, enzymes in the liver. Um, so I'm sure that one's going to come back to haunt. Milk thistle stimulates the enzymes in the liver. Very, very good researched evidence on it. Um, and loads of people take milk thistle, and not enough people take dandelion. I never use milk thistle clinically without using dandelion. Dandelion root stimulates the enzymes stimulates the production of bile and the elimination of bile. If you just take milk thistle, you increase the enzymes, but you don't, it's like increasing the production in a factory without having the orders to fulfill. 
and without having the transport to deliver them, even if you have the orders to fulfil. So the milk thistle is um, very good for, uh, I use it a lot for the side effects of medication as integrated medicine. I use it in cancer. Um, I use it in fatty liver, huge swell of people with fatty liver and degenerative changes of the liver. Um, I use it in diabetes. Uh, I use it a lot. I use it a lot. I use it for chronic anxiety because people hold on to all this stuff. Um, I use it in, in constipation. Um, this one at the back here is this. This here is the uh, biennial phase of the evening primrose. Remember, I showed you the biennial phase of the. Um, and this is this is not those ones. This one is sweet Sicily. Do you want to pass a few of the seeds around? There's loads of them. Um, and these taste like aniseed, and you use the leaves and the seeds and the plant. <coughs> the seeds are turning a bit hard now. But you use the leaves to sweeten the rhubarb or to sweeten uh, apple. This would be our natural, one of our natural sweeteners, uh, as would sugar beet. Um, this is cramp bark, the Gelder Rose. Um, the uh, bark of this is used. Um, I use it for pain along with valerian. A mixture of 50-50 valerian and cramp bark, particularly for period pains, but also for headaches, migraines, um, anything where the, there's cramp and spasm associated with pain. Um, did I mention the comfrey? There's another big stand of it over there behind you. Comfrey is known as knitbone in, from the Aran Islands to um, the other side of the how many languages are there between here and there? Um, and this was before there was tunnels under the mountains. Um, so every culture and society found out that, com that comfrey actually knits bone. All right? It's unequivocal. The translation in every language is knit bone. Um, and we think we're very clever. But if they had broken legs, they would splint them with sticks, wrap them in the comfrey leaves and wet them. And that would work exactly the same way as a plaster of Paris, except with healing properties. All right. They, it's, it, there's a lantoin in it. There's various other constituents that has very deep penetration. We sell comfrey cream as a fantastic moisturizing cream. If you use the comfrey cream once or twice a week overnight, it's not, um, it's not a... a uh, it doesn't absorb nicely, it's greasy, whatever I tell you, it does the job. Um, so it's not an easy kind of uh, sell. It's it's kind of, but if you want, it works as gardeners, for gardeners' hands as well. So if you want skin? it very good, very good for dry skin. Mm. For, for eczema, nappy rash as well. Good for nappy rash, mm. combined with marigold, which yeah. is antifungal and antibacterial. Yeah, very good. And can you use things after a bone's broken recently? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's very good. It continues the the healing. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have over here? That's a better example of. See the meadow sweet there, with the wine stem. So and the soap wort. See the, in the corner over there. See that green leaf? That's soap wort, and that makes suds. You put that into water, and it makes suds, and that's what they would have washed. Uh, yeah. In the old days. Yeah. They were, the, they were the good times, really, with all the natural remedies and everything, weren't they? Well, it was a mixed time. I know time. it was hard. Yeah, it, yeah, it was very hard. The, they knew all the old, uh, the, all the old they, stores. They certainly knew a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, I like the integrated medicine approach, where you get the best of both worlds. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Have I loaded you down with information now, guys? 